We continue through our Advent journey, and we've come to this third Sunday of Advent. That this year, uh, as you, I hope, are aware, next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Of course, it follows the third, but it's also Christmas Eve. That we're kind of gypped this year, we're shortened a week of Advent. But as I often uh, speak to about Advent and Lent, it's so easy for us to skip ahead, to jump to our destination. We want to jump to Christmas or jump to the joy of Easter. Yesterday I was out uh, picking up a Christmas tree. We need a little Christmas joy in the rectory. So I was out picking up a Christmas tree and I noticed everything was on 40%, 30% off. So if you're looking for next year's decorations, come see me, I'll tell you where to go. And I was reflecting on that. Okay, they're getting ready to clear the shelves to get ready for Halloween. But it always seems that way, that we're, we can't finish one thing before we're moving on to the next. That we need to slow down. It's what happens on the 26th. Everyone packs up the tree, kicks them to the curb, we box everything up, throw it back on the shelf, and wait until next year. No, it's eight days we celebrate Christmas. Then we have the Christmas season. And so I always laugh this time of year. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Same to you. I'm waiting for someone to say, uh, Happy Advent. Thank you. Same to you. It's that time of preparation. And so we come to this day, in a particular way, the third week. We distinguish it by the different color candle we have this week. I asked one of uh, the eighth graders at the school mass at St. Mary's. So what candle is that third one? And he said, pink. And I looked at him and I said, incorrect. He's like, okay, father's colorblind or something. It's rose. I always joke, I don't wear pink, I wear rose. Jesus rose from the dead, he didn't pink from the dead. So I always give that public service announcement anytime we get to wear the rose-colored vestment. But I think it slows us down a minute. Why do we wear that rose? Why is this week different? It reminds us that we are celebrating Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice. That's what it means. Not just uh, joy, but to rejoice. We are, as Christians, to be joyful people. I often say in my homilies, and I think it's fair repeating, there are certain homilies in my life that I recall uh, what the priest was saying. I know you all remember every homily I've ever preached to you. Here we go. But in seminary, that professor, the priest that once said to us, he looked out a uh, uh, hundred seminarians, and you know, we were very poised, and maybe some of them were falling asleep. It was at the holy hour at night or whatever. But he says to us, he goes, gentlemen, if you're joyful people, remind your face once in a while. And I think we need the reminder. Joy, often, we simplify it to a feeling. Uh, It's a feeling of great pleasure or happiness. But rejoice, that's what we do today. To rejoice is an action. It's something we will. Are we going to rejoice at the closeness of Christ, the Savior of the world? He's coming soon. We prepare for the celebration of his first coming. But we're also preparing for his second coming. Isn't that great news that God, the Savior of the world, Jesus, is going to come again someday? Some of us might be a little terrified. Well, repent and believe in the gospel. Be ready. It's what the last month and a half readings have taught us before Advent. We don't know the hour or the time, but we rejoice at the fact Christ is going to come. Right? To rejoice, it's to feel or to show great joy or delight. Do we cultivate that great joy and delight at the coming of Christ? That great joy and delight that we are allowed, that we can, that we're invited every week to come before Christ, the living God. Jesus, who makes himself present to us in the Eucharist on the altar. Who makes his mercy and love known to us in the sacrament of healing uh, confession. Do we rejoice at that fact? Or do we forget to remind our face 
Or do we forget to remind ourselves of how we live our life? To rejoice. And in these days, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to sing that uh, great uh, song, that great hymn, the carol, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king. It is that joy that the hymn speaks of, that we receive our king that should make us happy and joyful. Let every heart prepare him room. That's what we're doing. We're crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. That's what John was doing, preparing the way of Christ. What is he? I laughed last week, right, with Mark's gospel. Mark normally doesn't give us details, but I love the way he gives us the dietary habits and fashion sense of John the Baptist. And there he was with camel hair and eating locusts and honey. Okay, thanks. Uh, what does that mean? As I said last week, he was focused, he knew his mission, his uh, calling by God was to prepare the way of the Lord. And so it didn't matter what he ate or what he wore. He was simplistic in his mission in bringing that preparation uh, of others, the baptism, so that they could receive Jesus. In our baptism, we've received that same call to be heralds crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. And how do we prepare the way of the Lord? By the joy we cultivate in our life by ridding our lives of sin and taking up lives of virtue. That we rejoice in all things. And Paul goes on to tell us today in his letter to the Thessalonians, a great few lines that we should memorize, we should call to mind each day. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, we are to rejoice always. Not when it's easy, not when we feel like it, but in the difficult moments of life, we are to rejoice in the knowledge of God, rejoice in His love for us. When we are stuck in traffic and the car in front of us is not going fast enough, Thank you, Lord, for this moment I get to offer to you as a gift. Are you rejoicing in traffic? I don't think so. It's difficult, but that's what he's reminding us in all things. In our sadness and in our sorrow, maybe at the passing of a loved one, do we rejoice in the love that we shared with that person? Do we rejoice in that moment knowing that God longs to call all of us to himself. That our faith gives us courage uh, to know that God longs for us to be with him in the paradise of heaven. Thank God this is not the only life we get to live for. This is not heaven. But we rejoice that every day and every moment we are called one step closer to that place and time. Do we rejoice in that sorrow, in our frustration? Do we rejoice when someone is rewarded for something we think we deserve, that promotion or whatever that might be? Do we rejoice in God's blessing to others in all things? Rejoice always. Again, not when it's easy. It's easy to rejoice, but in the difficult times, We are to rejoice, to pray without ceasing. Prayer is to communicate with God. It's a conversation. Lord, help me to see your will or your plan in this moment. Lord, let me see the blessing you're going to work out of this moment of suffering or the moment I have to carry my cross when it feels extra heavy today. May I rejoice in the fact you're working something beautiful and great. Do we rejoice in those moments? In all circumstances, give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for this moment, for the gifts you've given me, for what you're asking me to do as your disciple, to rejoice, to share that joy with other people. And so, again, remind your face once in a while. It's okay to smile. I encourage it. 
to smile at other people, to share that joy, and people like joyful people. And some of the most joyful people I know, the most faithful people, have some of the most difficult lives of those I know. But it's a choice. It's an action. I'm choosing joy in Christ. That's what the martyrs and the saints did. In all things, they chose joy in Christ. And so as we prepare the way for the Lord this week in a uh, more uh, uh, directed focus, as Christmas is right on the horizon, let us not skip ahead, but enjoy this week with the Lord this day. To rejoice in the blessings of this moment. Rejoice in the blessing of the coming of Christ and his second coming. May we be agents of joy. May we cry out to those who need to hear it. Prepare the way of the Lord. Repent, believe in the gospel, receive the joy that only comes in Christ Jesus. That joy endures all things, brings us through all things. Let us always be those agents of Christ's joy to to rejoice always in everything we go through.